Now, magnetic field. Just like we had an electric field to get away from this action at a distance problem, in other words, if a charge here can put a push on a charge back there, how do we explain that? Well, this charge creates an electric field in the room everywhere, and the electric field pushes on that charge. Well, the same thing is going to be true with magnetic fields. If two things are pushing on each other magnetically without touching, what we say is the pusher <laughs> creates a magnetic field everywhere in the room, and then that field pushes on the pushy. And in truth, they're pushing on each other by third law. They're each creating a field that's pushing on the other. Now, the direction of that field, in the case of a magnetic field, is very, very easy to visualize. All you have to do is take a compass and set it down. And the direction that that compass points is the direction of the magnetic field that it finds itself in. Okay? Now, that's clearly oversimplifying things. Because this compass needle, which is a little bar magnet, is constrained to rotate on its pivot in a plane, in a horizontal plane. If I had a compass needle, a little bar magnet, that was gimbaled so that it could point anywhere it wanted to, in this room it would point towards Canada and down 70 degrees. Okay? So it would point towards Canada and down 70 degrees. And that's the direction of the Earth's magnetic field here in Bozeman is towards Canada and down 70 degrees. Now, we use the symbol B for the magnetic field, and this seems out of character. You remember we use the symbol E, capital E, for an electric field. And that made sense. But B, or the magnetic field does not. And it turns out that we're honoring a dead professor, Phil uh, Sabar. Uh, and in honor of that professor who taught us a lot about magnetic fields, we use capital B. Okay? Now, we can visualize what a magnetic field looks like by taking a bunch of iron filings. And in the presence of a, of a magnetic field, those filings get turned into little bar magnets, and they act like little compass needles. And you've all done that in grade school. You've dumped a whole bunch of filings, uh, metal filings, iron filings on a piece of glass, and then you put a bar magnet underneath it. Now, just to make sure we're on the bus, that bar magnet is free to rotate about that red dot. It's going to rotate one quarter turn. It finds itself in a magnetic field pointing towards the open door. Will it rotate clockwise or counterclockwise? Tell your neighbor. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Okay. <laughs> the compass needle, the part of the compass needle that has the arrow head, is the north seeking part of the compass needle. It is the part that's labeled N. And so this thing would rotate clockwise a quarter turns. 